Inspiration can be a funny thing. It's fleeting, almost like something that's alive on its own. Something that could be passing right by you, and if you're lucky, you can bump into each other. Back in February of this year, I set out late one night to attempt and capture the great comet everyone was obsessed over. Of an historic event and an equally historic location, a green-hued comet that has not been visible in the night sky since the Stone Age. That's about 50,000 years ago. It passed by the Earth for weeks, but for a few nights it would be brighter and closer than any other chance in our lifetime. I had never really done astrophotography or even taken many pictures over the last few years, but I still found myself packing gear and making plans for Joshua Tree, somewhere I had never even been before. And that was basically it. There were no other plans. Just get out there and see what I could see. In the end, I didn't really have the gear to quite capture what I had intended. Some nice people shared their expensive telescopes with me to gaze upon the comet's glory. But it's pretty safe to say that the Green Lantern's alter ego was never properly exposed. At least not by me. But I did get a few interesting shots that night that made me fall back in love with shooting again and the desert sky. Within two weeks of taking those shots, I was consistently posting content on this channel and have been ever since. Something happened that night that I can't really explain but left me with an inspiration that seems to still be passing. I've known for months now that the only proper way I could return to Joshua Tree would be to try and capture something equally as impressive out there on film. So why not a meteor shower? I threw Christy, Alex, and his partner Anna into the Subaru for a long day of blazing hot sun and impressive night skies. Except for the heat was so much worse than we were expecting, and we all died never to be seen again, but we'll get to that later. Our first stop along the highway to hell were the Cabanzo Dinosaurs. They had recently painted this famous roadside attraction in honor of the late Paul Rubens, and we thought it would be a fitting tribute to capture. After loading up my Nikon with some Color Plus and screaming Andy a few times, We hit the road again and set out for our second stop along the way to greatness. Bombay Beach. Yeah, Bombay Beach, <laughs> Florida. It feels like. Christy and I had been here a few years back. It was actually one of our first dates because nothing screams romance like folk art and a sea full of dead fish. But it was still really great to explore again. One of my first videos on this channel started right here on this beach, and it was really rad to see how much of the art and landscape had changed over the years. During this trip, I was mostly turning to my newly acquired 28mm for the Nikon for a wider interpretation of our surroundings. Whenever I wanted something a little closer, I would use my Fuji X-T5. I know, digital. Yuck. But hey, we have to have some backups in these situations. And it really does take some great portraits. It was about 103 out there, and the Color Plus was honestly the perfect choice to capture this contrasty, blazing sun. The warm tones and vibrant blue sky were a really solid argument for why Color Plus has become one of my favorite stocks to use. But did you really go to Bombay Beach if you didn't stop by the drive-in? I'm telling you, there's something romantic about a wasteland date. If you haven't tried it before, this is your sign. But like I said, it was pretty f***ing hot. So we resorted to cooling ourselves off by literally sticking raw ice to the back of our necks and letting the frozen water crack over our shoulders. Little did we know, this was kid stuff. By the time we made it out to Salvation Mountain, the temperature had reached over 115 degrees, and it felt like we were walking through a wall of fire. I know, I know, I can hear you in the comments. Going to the desert in summertime and you're surprised it's f***ing hot? Yes, Johnny, I'm surprised. Anything can live in this environment. 
but we accepted our deaths and made sandwiches under the awning by the parking lot. We met this really sweet woman, Diana, who worked with the team there that is still keeping Leonard's life's work a reality at Salvation Mountain. The amount of passion and effort to maintain this beautiful interactive exhibit in this heat and conditions was nothing more than impressive. As much as we wanted to explore more of the installation that was Salvation Mountain, the rains this year had done a number on the hillside, and many sections of the exhibit were actually closed off due to some soft points or collapsed overhangs. But our Pokemon are still guarding the gym there to this day. Seriously, come battle us. Once Salvation Army got saved, by the time we finally made our way into Joshua Tree, the edge of the sun had finally started to wane. We met some bikers along the way that were incredibly nice and seemed to be fascinated by our old cameras. One of the riders, Bill, was actually a Leica shooter himself and wanted to see how our results would fare with the meteor shower later that night. And again, I can hear you. The title of this video heavily implies shooting the night sky in film. Where are the f***ing night photos, William? I promise you, we're almost there. The last time I had been out to Joshua Tree, the sun had already set, so to capture it in this golden hour was something truly special. However, this was probably the only time I wished to not be still shooting Color Plus, since I had packed a Portra 800 with me. It was right there, but you work with what you got, and I leaned into the more contrasty latitude that was available to me in the moment. Hey, what's up, YouTube? <laughs> I love these shots, but some of them could have been absolute portfolio-worthy images if I had loaded up with Portra, I think. But they're still really incredible to have and look back on the day we survived the desert heat. Like this image of Christy is one of my favorites I've ever taken of her. The way the sunlight is bouncing off her glasses is really dreamy. I don't know what's going on here, but I love it. The layers, we'll just call it a happy accident. We had used the last hour of light to really scout out the location possibilities for where we wanted to use as a setup for our attempt at capturing the night sky later that night. Oh no. <laughs> but before we would do that, we needed some pancakes. I'm not really sure what the small town outside of Joshua Tree really has to offer, but I do know that French toast can literally fix a sunburn. Don't ask me the science. It's too advanced for a photography YouTube channel. You're just gonna have to trust me. When we returned to the park, the night sky took our breath away. We all stood there in the dark for several minutes, just taking it all in. It's not something I could properly capture on video, but you'll have to take my word for it. Very pretty. I decided for tonight's shoot to give myself some leeway and shoot HP5 for the stars. I love the idea of capturing the night sky in color, but since we wouldn't be focusing much on the foreground and more on the technical aspects, I wanted to have an even palette to learn as much as possible. I'd be shooting at f8 and setting my focus to infinity using a quick release cable to account for the long exposure time. And the best part was, everyone was super impressed with my $15 headlamp from Walmart. A win is a win. <laughs> we had to set up a few different times due to cars and other night hikers with their flashlights. We needed a long exposure to really allow the night sky a chance to show up on the film. I think the longest we were able to run before we needed to reset again was a little over 20 minutes. But once we found a spot secluded enough, we got it. Is it the most interesting foreground? No. 
but I'm incredibly proud of this image. And considering this shot was a bit over an hour and a half, I think we got extremely lucky under the conditions of how crowded the park eventually became. So here we are, six months later, and I can look at these two images side by side and say with confidence that they're some of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. I may not have captured that comet back in February, but we did pass by each other. And I think something sparked along the way. <laughs>